Well, hello, everybody on Facebook. Today is an amazing day. We are going to have a show that, honestly, I think will blow you away. This show I've titled uh, The Courage to Shift into High Gear. I've got some really special guests with me today. In studio with me is Bill Treasure. Bill is the author of uh, The Courage Goes to Work, among, uh, and he's got a new book out right now. It's called The Leadership Killer. Wait till you hear his message. It's absolutely amazing. And he's been a speaker around the country for years with this message. And this message is going to help take you and your business and your life to a completely new level. Also, I have uh, uh, my call-in guest is Kyle Bryant. And Kyle has overcome some challenges in his life that, listen, once you listen to his story, you don't have any problems. So here we go. Let's, Let's rock this. Go ahead. Ready. It's time to take a journey, to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Ken D. Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. So how do you shift into the most authentic, brilliant, and powerful version of yourself? Well, that's what I'm going to be discussing today. The show is called The Courage to Shift into High Gear, and I am your host, Kendi Foster. You know, each week we discuss areas of business and life to help our audiences grow and become the best versions of themselves. And we do it with some of the most courageous people on the planet. Today I have two of those people on the show with me. I have an extraordinary athlete, Kyle Bryant, with his new book, Shifting into High Gear, and well-known workplace expert, courage pioneer, and author of Courage Goes to Work, Bill Treasure. So I've got two amazing guests here, and you're going to want to listen to every bit of this show. Listen, I also want to welcome, we have now grown this show to 115 stations in 38 countries. All of the new countries we've added in the last uh, couple uh, weeks. Uh, If you're listening to us out there, I mean, we got Angola, we've got uh, Greece, we've got England, we've got a lot of places out there. I just want to give a shout out to you. This uh, radio broadcast is coming to you to help you to grow yourself, to really take your life to a whole new level. So I hope you'll tell your family, your friends, you can find us on on uh, all the replays on uh, VoicesOfCourage.us. That's VoicesOfCourage.us. All right, before I get to my guest, I want to give you my take on shifting into high gear. You know, there was a time in my life when I was in low gear. (laughs) I was hanging with lower companions, doing things that I wasn't proud of, in relationships that were destined to create hell on earth. And, you know, I was spinning my wheels, and I was looking for a way out, looking for a way out. Can you relate to any of that? Have you ever been in a place like that? I'm sure you have. Well, listen, I looked all up, all over the place for a way out. And, uh, you know, I looked at, uh, I went to workshops, I went, to, uh, went down a religious path, I asked friends, I, yeah, I, where, how do I get out of this mess? And you know what? There was no way out. There was only one way to do it, and it was a way in. I had to go within my own self and start to realize what what is within me that needed to change, that needed to develop, that needed to grow, that I needed to let go of. So shifting into high gear, I thought about this. Uh, how did I do it? And I'm going to give you my little quick process that I did. You know, first, it I, I got the clarity that I needed to release a lot of garbage. I was holding on to a lot of resentments and anger and really living from the past. If I wasn't living from the past, I was anxious in the moment of the future, and my future was dismal at that time, right, dismal. And so I thought, okay, what do I need to release? So I went through that, and I started inventory, what I needed to release in my life. Then I needed to start to reprogram my thinking, and I got some books and some tapes and some people that were wise, and I started listening to that to reprogram myself. Then I needed to engage in a different way. And, you know, I needed to put kind of the gas of willpower in my life. I started to wake up and take actions that I normally wouldn't have done. 
And then I had to kind of regulate what I was doing. I was regulating how fast I was going because, you know, I had no regulation before. I'd go 90 miles an hour, then I'd crash for a day or two, right? It wasn't the way to do life. So think of it this way if you're shifting into high gear. If you have a manual transmission in your car, right, Shifting begins with pushing in the clutch. That's the release. Then you shift or engage into the next gear, right? Then you put on the gas, and then you regulate your speed. So I wrote a book called The Courage to Change Everything. You're going to hear a lot about this book because this book is on its way to be a bestseller. And I wrote it because I know this. What I needed and what most people need is we need to reprogram our thinking. And we don't need just any thoughts to reprogram ourselves. We need daily actions, daily wisdom, daily strategies, and daily focused attention and actions to really take our lives to a completely new level. So if you're with me with that, you can check out the book right now at CourageToChange.us. That's CourageToChange.us. Now, I have an amazing guest online, and I'd like to bring him in right now. Kyle, are you there with me? I am here, yeah. Thanks for having me today. Really excited for the conversation. I, I'm so happy to have you on this show. And you have a new book out. It's called Shifting into High Gear. I actually dedicated this show to you because I thought, man, this is so cool. Well, I dedicated both my guests because my other guests all about courage. <laughs> so Yeah, man. Uh, you know, the courage to shift into high gear. That's what this is all about. But, I um, love it. You know, let me let me just introduce you, you know, a little bit about you. Um, you know, after a year of visits to various doctors and neurologists and finally UCLA uh, clinic. Uh, Kyle Bryant was diagnosed with uh, Frederick's, and I, I'm not going to say this right, Kyle, so you, you'll you say it for me, a ataxia? Yeah. Yep, ataxia. Uh, ataxia, yeah. okay. And it's a degenerative neurological disease that affects 1 in 50,000 people, making it officially a rare disease. And the invisible force that pulled on him for years, that prevented him from making the baseball team caused him to stumble at the band practice, falling off his bicycle. They finally figured it out, right? This wasn't good right. news for you, though, was it, Kyle? Or was it? <laughs> it was, I mean, it was It was definitely, uh, you know, bittersweet. Yeah. We finally had an answer, you know? Yeah. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was like, oh, my gosh, this isn't my fault, um, you know? It's not exactly logical to blame yourself, but it is something that happens. It's a real thing, you know? And so when I got the diagnosis, I could finally be like, you know what? It's not my fault. It's actually something that happened to us. It's this other thing, other force, external force, and we just need to figure out how to deal with it. So, um, you know, it was devastating news. Reading on the internet, you know, that I would slowly lose all the ability to take care of myself. I'd be in a wheelchair soon, and um, I would likely die a premature death due to heart disease. Obviously, that's a huge thing. That, that's and such that, a, that a really I can't I can't imagine what that must have been like when you started reading about that. And, you know, basically, it's telling you you're going to die a slow death, and it's not going to be fun. So how, right, did, yeah. how did you how did you deal with that circumstance? Well, you know, I I think I was pretty um, blissfully ignorant for a little while. You know, I I kind of kept it at arm's length for a, a little while and didn't learn much about it. Um, I but I also felt like I was the only one in the world that even had ever heard the words Friedrich that me and my parents, at least, um, I had really good support from my family, but I think that was the hardest thing was the isolation and just feeling so alone in the situation. And I bet a lot of people feel that way when they're diagnosed with something that they, they don't know what the future is going to hold. They're, they're in a place of kind of the avoid and unknown, a place of, you know, it can you can go right to fear. I'm sure. You know, you 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 oh. fear the unknown is what a lot of people go to. Did you experience that? 
Absolutely. I mean, why, why are we afraid of the dark? Because we don't know what's out there, right? As right. soon as you flip the lights on, it's not as scary anymore. And so that's where I was without a diagnosis and or not without di- but without knowing what the future was going to hold um it was a, it was a really tough spot to be in fear so i you know i'm going to shift gears with you cuz listen i happen to know the end of the story and i happen to know that <laughs> that you are this amazing brilliant light that somehow found the courage and the understanding and the willpower to really say, I'm not going to let this define me. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change what I do. I'm going to step into my life in a new way. When did all that come about? What happened for you? Well, you know, I really think the the biggest change was when I met other people with Friedrich's ataxia and realized that I was not alone and that these other people are happy and funny and driven and uh, all the things that I want for my life, right? And I was like, oh, my gosh, maybe I can be that way too. And um, so I really think that was the biggest turning point was just meeting other people. Um, You know, another key point was sitting down on a recumbent tricycle. You know, the big, the um, one of the key symptoms of FA is the loss of balance and coordination. And so I could hardly even walk straight anymore. Like, if you saw me walk down the street, you'd be like, that guy is so drunk. But um, <laughs> so, so I sat down on a recumbent trike. It has three wheels, so I could pedal it and move forward without a wobble. And as I was sitting down the trike and seeing the the ground move under me and realizing that I was doing that on my own and I could move, you know, miles on my own power, it was absolutely amazing. And it was something that I thought I had lost forever, you know, and, and regained an instant. Well, so. you know what? You know what? You so inspired me. It's like, you know, I, I used to get upset when I'd lose a pencil, Okay. I used to get upset when somebody said something, uh, you know, negative to me. And, you know, I, I, I love having guests like you on the show because really what it says is that, listen, I have no problems. Most of us have no problems. We have courageous people like you leading the way, showing us, listen, man, you know what? It's, this is what I have, but I'm overcoming these circumstances. I'm living a life. I'm living a great life. And you can, too, no matter what your circumstances. Do you feel like that's kind of your message out there? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, there's so much crap in this life, and we can focus. Like, there's no question. We can choose to focus on that stuff, or we can choose to focus on all the great things and focus on what we want out of life, what well, we want to accomplish. That's that's and great. It, that's great. Hey, listen, man, i got to take a break, but I'm going to come back, and when, when I come back, I want to take a deep dive into that book and uh, what – is in there and how people can use that to take their life to a completely new level. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. The most talented athletes in the world rely on a coach to get better and the most successful business people do the same. I have found working with Ken D. Foster to be an extraordinary experience. He helped me to expand my vision, increase profits, and showed me the way to have more fulfillment and success in my life. Ken D. Foster is the coach's coach for business and life. He has been nicknamed the coach of the successful and wealthy. Ken is an instrumental part of my team and the success I have generated over the past 12 months. Ken gave me the strategies to increase productivity, reduce turnover, and take my business to the next level. So what's holding you back? Ken D. Foster is a master business coach with proven strategies to dramatically increase efficiency and productivity while maximizing individual development and fulfillment. Explore your possibilities. For a free consultation, log on to KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. There comes a time when you know you need to restart and regain control of your life. A time to seek freedom from the anxiety, addiction, and other issues that may be bringing you down. 
a time to heal and re-emerge as the real you. Villa Kalima is a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatment. Villa Kalima offers proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. Villa Kalima focuses on healing the cause, not temporarily masking symptoms. It's the only way to truly recover and find yourself again. Villa Kalima is located in a beautiful, peaceful, resort-like setting and is a licensed and accredited residential treatment center accepting a variety of health insurances. Start your healing and renewal today by calling Villa Kalima in La Costa, California at 760-814-8214. 760-814-8214. Villa Kalima, a place for transformation. We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, we're back, and we are talking with Kyle Bryant, and he has a uh, new book out in the world. It's called The... Um, or to go contile. Here it is. It's called the shifting into high gear. And I, you know, Kyle, I, I want to say one more thing uh, about you in just one second. But I, I want to give a shout out to one of my sponsors. Uh, we're being sponsored by an organization called Wasabi Publicity. Wasabi Publicity is an organization that works with change makers. They take authors and speakers and individuals out of amazing products, and what they do is they put those products, they repackage those products, they put together press releases, they put together uh, media packages to get people on shows like Oprah, Dr. Phil, uh, Ellen DeGeneres. They are an amazing group, um, and I, uh, they send a lot of guests to me here on Voices of Courage. So I want to give them a shout out, Wasabi Publicity. Uh, the founder is Drew Gerber, and if you would like to connect with Drew, you can uh, just go to wasabipublicity.com. That's W-A-S-A-I-B-I, -I, I believe, Wasabi Publicity. And if it's not that, Google it. You'll find them. <laughs> okay. All right. So listen, Kyle, um, I was... Uh, uh, I want I want to reintroduce you, Kyle, because you're amazing, man. You know, you were diagnosed with a debilitating disease called Frederick's ataxia at the age of 17. And Kyle set off across the country to raise awareness. Today, he is the founder and director of Ride Ataxia, a fundraising program of the, Fred, uh, the Frederick's Ataxia Research Alliance, F-A-R-A, which welcomes thousands of participants who raise $1 million uh, a year for research every single year. That's an amazing feat. I don't know how you did that, but I, I'm, I'm so proud to have you on the show and know that you did that. Um, what, what, you know, there must be some, you know, people go, oh, he's got a ter terrible disease. Tell me the benefits of, of the disease. Tell me the benefits that you've got yourself by by stepping into this. I'm not trying to discount the disease. I just think there's some personal development that took place as a result of this. Is that right or not, Kyle? No, I, I, no, I agree 100%. Um, you know, it, it forces you, when you're faced with something like this, it forces you to recognize all the good things in life. It, it kind of seems counterintuitive, but um, I'm not someone who dwells on all the terrible things that happen. And um, it's all about what we do with it, right? It's been said a, a thousand times, a million times. You know, life is all about how we react to what happens to us. And um, so I think this, I think Friedrich's ataxia, rare disease, or any other challenging situation forces us to find the good in life because we we can't just dwell on all the bad things that are happening to us. Isn't that the truth? I think that makes that so much sense for all of us because, you know, it's it's easy to get caught up in the negativity of life, um, whether you're struggling with a disease or whether you're just out walking around healthy. There are challenges coming at us left and right, all of us, all the time. So how do you stay positive in the, in the, uh, in the face of pain and struggle and it, you know and and physical challenges how do you stay happy with that Kyle 
Well, for me, it's really, really important to have goals and to be hyper-focused on those goals. Um, And so if I'm putting all my energy into accomplishing something, that means that I'm not even recognizing all the terrible things, all the, you know, I mean, sure, those thoughts creep in every once in a while, like, um, you know, my life's going to be shorter than it was before, or, oh, man, I have to use a wheelchair and nobody else does, but if I'm hyper-focused on my goals, then all that matters is getting to that goal is to, you know, raising a million dollars for research is to, you know, finding um, a a machine to uh, fulfill the physical requirements of another person that has ataxia. All these different things that we want to do, if we focus on those, then all the other stuff just falls away. Well, I sure love that. You know, yeah, Kyle's new book is called Shift into High Gear. And boy, I tell you, there's nobody better that can teach that than you. So let me ask you this. What's the one thing that you hope will people will take away from this book? So I think my one, one of my biggest things from this book was uh, real, and I think I realized this for myself as I was writing it and just going through the process, is that disability is not good or bad. Um, challenges, any challenge, it's not good or bad. It just is. And we just need to find a way to conquer it. I think that if we change our thinking about the challenges that we face and face them objectively, not not giving a value judgment, but just being like, you know what, here it is. Let's figure out how to get around it and get to what I really want in life. I think that's my main message from the book. Well, you know, the message for me was just to shift into high gear. How did you come up with that title? What, what, where did that even come from? I, w- I wanted something intense, you know. Um, at first, my publisher um, was saying we should do shifting, shifting gears. And I was like, ah, that it makes me feel like I'm shifting away from something to go somewhere else. No, I think that you need to that we all need to go towards our challenges, and f- to be able to figure them out. If we if we run away, if we shift into some other direction, then um, we're doing ourselves a disservice. I think that we need to go towards our challenges. Figure them out, get really intimately familiar with our challenges, and figure out a way to get around them and get what we really want. Well, you know, I, I guess one of the challenges you probably had writing the book was how do you write the book with the disease, right? And I see that you work with uh, with uh, writer Alex uh, Schnitzler, and uh, let's. How was that process like for you? It was it was an amazing process. I would have so I live on the east coast and Alex lives on the west coast and um we would have phone conversations, you know, twice a week for two months or something and then he would write a a chapter and we'd review it together. But you know, those those phone calls it wasn't a matter it was not a matter of me just being like, Here, write this down like Right, what I'm saying. No, it was we were having a conversation and really being like, what does this mean? What did it mean to me back then? What does it mean now? And what might it mean to me in the future? And what could we teach others about it? And, um, you know, I don't think we do that enough in life. It really gave me an opportunity to look back at the events in my life and really scrutinize them and figure out what it meant. And um, that's ultimately what we put down the book. That's really powerful. Well, listen, the book is called Shifting into High Gear. The author is Kyle Bryant, and I take it they can get it on Amazon. Is that correct? Yep. Anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any of your local bookstores, if they don't have it, then ask them for it. They'll be able to get it. You know, this uh, you're you're one of my heroes, brother, and uh, I'm so glad you're on the planet, and I'm glad you're uh, teaching people how to overcome their minds, no matter what the circumstance, and step into high gear. It really means a difference. Any final thoughts? 
Um, you know, my final thought is just that I appreciate being on your show, and I really appreciate your message. And right back at you, you know, I'm glad you're on the planet doing the work you're doing. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Kyle. And uh, again, shifting into high gear, you can get it in uh, on Amazon or anywhere books are stole, sold. I guess not stole. They're sold. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Take you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I'm going to shift over uh, to my guest in studio right now. We have an amazing guest. His name is Bill Treasure. Bill has written a few books. Uh, one, the book that caught my attention was "The Courage uh, Goes to Work." Uh, obviously, the title of courage in there, Bill. Yeah. So, um, we, uh, uh, you and I have crossed our paths have crossed. You've gone through some difficult times in your life, and uh, now you are a change agent. You're out. Uh, you're a speaker. You're an author. You're a um, Family man, you're a man that uh, really knows how to take his life and others' lives to a whole new level. Is that correct? You got one minute. Well, <laughs> you, you know, I, what I, I could say is I feel really humbled to follow Kyle uh, after that. That was really wonderful. Um, I'm fortunate that my work is uh, I'm a courage builder. I'm in the courage building business, and it's uh, not because I have uh, have any more courage than anybody else. All your listeners have courage. <laughs> But I've found a way to activate mine, and it was so redeeming an experience for me that I, I codified what I learned through that process and experience, and then I put it into my books, and now I put it into my work. And I learn from every listener. I learn from every reader. I learn from every workshop. I learn from the people who impact me, and then I just carry it forward. Okay, well, listen, i got to take a break, but when we come back, I'm going to get into the heart of your book and your message. Uh, you are definitely a courage pioneer, and I'm looking to explore your mind so that we can figure out what are those thoughts that are really driving you and that can help my listeners drive themselves into more success. Great. I'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. You know you have it, the potential for a more rewarding life. A life that matters. But how do you get there? The answer is in a best-selling book by the coach of the successful and wealthy, Ken D. Foster. The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Awaken Your Hidden Genius and Transform Your Life. With this powerful yet amazingly simple daily guide, your future is in your hands. You will be empowered to unlock your potential, bring out your true gifts, increase your wealth, and take your life and business to a new level. Get your life-transforming copy of Ken D. Foster's The Courage to Change Everything by going to couragetochange.us. That's couragetochange.us. Quite frankly, there's no other book like this. Imagine what your life could be like if you had at your fingertips the success principles to create the life you've always wanted. Are you ready to live your dream? Go to couragetochange.us. We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Okay, well, welcome back. I'm sitting in studio with Bill Treasure. Bill is a workplace expert, courage pioneer, and author of Courage Goes to Work. How to Build Backbones, Boost Performance, and Get Results. He's the founder of Giant Leap Consulting, a consulting and training company specializing in courage building. And he advises organizations including NASA, eBay, and the like, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, on teaching them how to bring courage and strength into their workplace, into the business. So, Bill, glad to have you here. Um, you also have, you know, your your new book out, which we can talk about in a second, Leadership Killer. I love that. But listen, before I get to that, I want to know about uh, why is courage driving you? What's, what's the courage uh, message here? Yeah, you know, well, I've had my business now for almost 20 years, um, and it's a courage-building company, and I, it's my focus of my work, right? But even before that, if you wind back between the other consulting jobs and graduate school and before that, before all of it, 
I was a professional high diver with the U.S. high diving team. <laughs> and I, I remember to, you <laughs> telling me about this story. Go ahead. <laughs> and I used to dive off a of 100-foot platforms into little pools that were 10 feet deep. I want to know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And the worst part was it was in front of 2,000 people, and I was dressed in a Speedo, which took a lot of courage. Uh, but in the process, I actually was a high diver who was afraid of heights. Mm-hmm. And the story, the story starts before that with a coach who took an interest in me and saw my potential. And I had potential to get a, potentially a scholarship to college. And, but I was afraid of heights, so I didn't want to learn a high board list of dives. But my coach sort of nudged me out into discomfort and found a way. We would go down to Iona College in New Rochelle, New York, and they had a diving board built on a hydraulic lift. So he could take that diving board and move it from one meter to one and a half meter. And now my heart was racing and I'm going over on my dives. I'm getting welts on my legs and uh, not wanting to go to practice. But eventually, after 100 dives, it's actually a psychological term called the mere exposure effect. The more you merely get exposed to the thing you're petrified of, the more desensitized you become to it. And then I grow in my confidence at one and a half meters and I get a little bored. Boredom is a great clue that it's time to stretch back out into discomfort. So when I got bored, he moved it to two meters. Through this process of modulating between comfort and discomfort, I eventually got a high board list of dives, and that's just the three meters, which got me a full scholarship to West Virginia University. And it was that process of modulating and uh, and doing sort of little lead-ups that eventually the guy who started out with a profound fear of heights became a member of the U.S. high diving team, and I thought... If I found my courage, and it was so important to me, and it's about the discovery of getting comfortable with facing your fear, could that be useful to other people? And so I codified the lessons and turned it into Courage Goes to Work, and now it's my work. That's that's really good. You know, I I like what you said about the uh, modulating between, you know, almost pain and pleasure or fear and, and comfort, right? Um, that was that part of the uh, strategy? Yeah, that, and it's it, interesting yeah. you say pain and pleasure. There, there's a... Um, uh, so when I, w- I wrote a book before this called Right Risk on personal risk-taking, mm-hmm. and I came across the work of a guy named Dr. Michael Apter, mm-hmm. I- and I was so enamored with his work that I invited myself to his home, and I spent the weekend at his home learning from this guy at the guy's feet, right? Like right. I, this guy's like the master of uh, risk-taking. And, and he said, Bill, what happens to you when you're really, really afraid? So I'll ask you, Ken, physiologically. What happens to your body when you're really, really afraid? Well, I might shake. I might sweat. I might uh, uh, tense up for sure. Um, and uh, my brain shuts down, and, I, and I'm, and i like, looking for what's wrong. Yeah. yeah. You know, and many of these same physiological feelings happens when you're going to have sex. Mm. Now, the reason I tell you that. That's because that's I'm afraid, <laughs> right? <laughs> what am I getting into? <laughs> Is that there's no neurological difference between intense feelings of fear and intense feelings of excitement or arousal. They're high arousal states, and fear is a high arousal state. He said the only difference between fear and excitement is that you experience fear as displeasure and you experience excitement as pleasure. And what if you could do the things you were afraid of and cause them to bring you pleasure? So he says, you know, you go to a horror movie, or if you go on a roller coaster, or if you jump out of an airplane with a parachute on, you're doing a fearful thing to feel excited as long as you feel psychologically safe and that's huge psychological safety is huge hmm. to the the willingness to experience discomfort you can convert feel fearful feelings fearful feelings into feelings of excitement right. pleasure versus displeasure right so what you're in essence saying is we can pretty much overcome any of our fears if we are willing to face them and we know the strategy to face them that's what i'm hearing here the, the other piece of it, Ken, is this. Courage is not fearlessness. Right. You know, a lot of people say, we'll have a bumper sticker on our car or our truck. It says, no fear. Right. No fear. Right. No brains. Yeah. And that's not courage. Courage is fearful. I told you uh, before the show started that I, that I saw a, a post this morning on Facebook from a friend of mine in New York where I grew up. So shout, up, shout out to Lizzie. Uh, in Larchmont, New York, where I grew up. And she posted this morning a picture of her at Jones Beach in New York. And then under it, she explained how all her life she's been afraid of driving over bridges and driving by herself. Yesterday, she tried to go to Jones Beach, got to the bridge, and turned around and went back home. So this was on her mind, overcoming this obstacle, right? Today, she took a picture of herself. She did it, right? She faced her fear. She walked with 
her fear. When you're in a courageous moment, it is fearful, but you carry on despite the fact that you are afraid. That's what makes courage courage. You know, and I I love that because I, I even think about that in our um, in our relationships. You know, uh, whether in the workplace or whether at home, it takes courage to face the fear of having that conversation that we don't want to have. It takes courage to face the. Uh, you know, maybe our body image. We look at it and go, you know, it's it's this is where I thought I'd be. I I need to I need to have a real honest discussion with myself, maybe with my physician, maybe with my my wife or family member. That's courage to me. Oh yeah. So that's what you're talking There's about. There's so much. You know, we a lot of people think of courage as bravery. Let's charge the hill and yeah. fight the thing. And right. Yeah, that, that, that's certainly that's courage. Yeah. I mean, people landed on the moon as courage, but for the everyday person who's not in a heroic situation. Right. Vulnerability, getting disarmed, admitting something about ourselves that we need to face. Uh, it's an entirely different kind of courage, but the courage to experience your vulnerability, getting disarmed, l- giving up control and my need to be right uh, is absolutely. I can never do that, but. <laughs> hard. <laughs> Actually, my wife teaches me that all the time. It's it's uh, one of the things that uh, uh, has helped our relationship grow into uh, into this beautiful, blessed marriage that we have. Yeah. But it is that place. Yeah. yeah. So it takes courage to do those things. It absolutely. You know, a lot yeah. of times in my workshops or a keynote, I'll ask if, for the folks in the uh, the room who have ever been described as controlling or would describe as themselves as controlling to raise their hand. And like a lot of hands go up, right. right? Including my own. And then I ask people, how many of you absolutely love to be controlled by other people? Ugh. And no hands go up, right? None. Especially the hands of people like, you know, like right. us that like to be controlled. And experiencing emotional vulnerability, this idea of what I call trust courage, courage to trust others, for example, um, takes a willingness to give up control, and that absolutely requires a certain different kind of courage. Well, I, you know, I know for me, one of my triggers is when somebody tells me, um, in a, it could be in a loving way, what to do, when to do it, how to do it. They're giving me unsolicited advice. I, <laughs> that's my head defaults to that. And I, I kind of react to that. I kind of cringe. There's a part of my body that just almost wants to – it, 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 it like – winds up and then it wants to strike out <laughs> yeah i'm with you man are you i'm with you so how yeah. do we overcome that Just i like, mean that, that's that's a big thing because we really i don't i don't like going me personally i'm always looking for ways that i don't react i respond right i like to just get quiet when i feel that and not re- re- react to it but yeah I, i'm not 100 percent on that no I and I, that. I work on it too and like the, the seven words that i like really hate are you know what you need to do when somebody's like you know what you need to do and they have a finger pointed in my face right it's like it you know i chaff at it right i guess that through time and emotional maturity and understanding what your triggers i remember the great uh writer you you remember the great guru uh dr stephen covey taking the word responsibility and breaking it in two and saying being response able so once you feel the trigger what in my case the seven words with the finger pointed at me to be able to say okay i'm triggered and if I just sort of cool out and allow myself to respond differently to the trigger, there's a, what he called a degree of freedom between that space. Between the trigger and the response, the degree of freedom makes all the difference. That's where the courage matters. That's great. Well, listen, i got to take a break. Uh, we'll be right back. I'm in studio here with Bill Treasure. We're talking about courage. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. There comes a time when you know you need to restart and regain control of your life. A time to seek freedom from the anxiety, addiction, and other issues that may be bringing you down. A time to heal and reemerge as the real you. Villa Kalima is a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatment. Villa Kalima offers proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. Villa Kalima focuses on healing the cause, not temporarily masking symptoms. It's the only way to truly recover and find yourself again. Villa Kalima is located in a beautiful, peaceful, resort-like setting and is a licensed and accredited residential treatment center accepting a variety of health insurances. Start your healing and renewal today by calling Villa Kalima in La Costa, California at 760-814-8214. 760-814-8214. Villa Kalima, a place for transformation. 
We're back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, we're talking about the courage to shift into high gear. My in-studio guest is Bill Treasure. Before I get back to Bill, I want to give a shout-out to a couple of our sponsors. We are being brought to you by Women's Wisdom. They are San Diego's premier networking group for purpose-driven, soul-inspired female entrepreneurs. You can find them on the web at womenswisdom.net. That's womenswisdom.net. If you're a female entrepreneur, you're, you want to put it into high gear, this is the group to connect with, womenswisdom.net. Also, I want to give a shout-out to my new sponsor, Wasabi Publicity. Wasabi Publicity takes authors, speakers, and individuals that have products or services that they want to brand in a new way and maybe take it on uh, an Oprah show, put it out on an Ellen DeGeneres, put it in your local TV or radio market and really be able to rebrand yourself and take your business to a new level. That's what Wasabi Publicity does all day long. If you go to their website, wasabipublicity.com, there's a form there that says contact us. Uh, The owner, the CEO, would love to talk to you. His name is Drew Gerber. For 18 years, he's been one of the top PR people in the nation. Drew Gerber said he will talk to you individually. So hope you'll check him out, wasabipublicity.com. All right, courage. Courage going to work. Courage coming into my studio. (laughs) Courage is everywhere today. I'm loving it. Bill, (laughs) let's talk about some... uh, Three, uh, you, you have here three different behavioral expressions of courage. What is that? I think the, the topic of courage can be intimidating for people. Mm. Uh, you know, and a lot of times when you start out working with a group of people and, and having them assess their own courage, they don't see themselves as being courageous people. Um, and I think that's because we think that courage is reserved for heroes. Right. You know, the person running up the hill with a machine gun in their hand, charging the hill, the person running into a building that's on fire. But there's a more tempered, everyday experience of courage that is accessible to all of us. What I've done in the book, and as I was reflecting on and researching on the idea of courage, I came across the idea that there are basically different dimensions and different behavioral buckets of courage that I call the three buckets of courage. The first bucket is what I call try courage. It's the courage of first attempts. The first time you do something that you've not done but other people may have done. You're attempting it. It's the courage of the attempt. Other people have crossed the threshold. threshold. They've got the experience of doing it. But the first time you're facing that unknown, that's what I call try courage. That's one behavioral bucket. You can think of it as the courage of action or initiative, which is different than the second bucket of courage, which we sort of talked about in the last segment. The courage could, to get emotionally exposed and vulnerable, to trust and entrust others and accept the challenge that they could potentially betray you. Each behavioral bucket comes with a, a risk, and the risk of try courage is I could wipe out and hurt myself. The risk of trust courage is that I could entrust you, and you could hurt me through betrayal. So the courage it takes to sort of get disarmed and accept that challenge that it might happen. And then the third behavioral bucket of courage is what I call tell courage. It's the courage of voice or assertiveness, the courage of the truth teller, To say the impolitical thing, what needs to be voiced that you have been sublimating, you've been swallowing, and then finally you get the courage to cough it up and say the truth that you're experiencing is a hard thing to do. You can think of like the whistleblower and how hard it is to do things like that. So three different buckets, try, trust, and tell. There's lots of similarities between them, but distinctions as well. I really like that. And one of the things that comes to my mind as you say that is there's people here listening on my show right now thinking, where do I find my courage? Um, you know, what bucket is my courage in? And, and where is that? What is, is it an energy? Is it a, is it a commitment? Is it a goal? What, what is it? What, what, mm. What's your experience with that? Where so it's a great question, right? Yeah. Like where, where do I need more courage? My, yeah. my response would be, here's a good question worth contemplating. Where are you playing it too safe? Mm-hmm. You know, you might know some area of your life that you're avoiding and you're playing it safe in that area. Or maybe you've gotten cocky yeah. and complacent in that area. And that's where there's too much safety. And you got to rattle things up a little bit because you've experienced a great deal of success and you've got a great deal of confidence there. Maybe you're letting that atrophy. 
So where are you playing it too safe is a great question to discover where you might need to go. Well, you yeah. know, I, and I find it in my own life in, uh, when I, you know, I've been coaching uh, individuals for 24 years, right, business uh, coaching. And I find that those that can be uncomfortable, be comfortable in the uncomfortable zone, they get a sense of being comfortable doing things that most people don't do. Those are the ones that continue to succeed, and that has a lot to do with courage. Yeah, that's a great, great point. And uh, I can't wait to you know, read your new book that comes out, The Courage to Change Everything, because it does change everything. And it takes embracing discomfort, as you just pointed out. It's that willingness to experience, to, you know, if you want to use a fashionable word, sort of lean in to discomfort. Uh, there's a great quote from Ginny Rometty, who is the CEO of IBM. She was speaking at the Forbes magazine most powerful women's summit uh, actually it was fortune magazine's most powerful women's summit and she said comfort and growth don't coexist in other words if you want to grow right. progress and evolve you got to be willing to get uncomfortable otherwise you are going to stagnate or regress and go back that's right so i'm going to ask my audience this question you may want to write it down and think about it this week um the question is this and bill said i'm going to paraphrase what he said if i was courageous what would I do now? If you were courageous, what would you do now? And I think it's like we look at, well, maybe in my career or in my relationship or in my business or my health or my fitness or whatever area it is for you. What, if you were courageous, what would you do now? Mm. If you were courageous, what would you do now? And what change might occur as a result of applying your courage? I love that. And, and all, the other thing, what change? Who, who might you become right. as a result of stepping into that? What, yeah. Yeah. What's, you know, what, what is the next you? What is the higher level you that through the application of your courage could become? Exactly. Uh, so it's a great question. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, it's interesting because courage takes us out of the consciousness that we have. Think about this for a second. If you, if you have a certain level of consciousness, right, and you see the world through, that, through that, those points of view that you have, those beliefs, those experiences that you've experienced, for you to actually see something different or experience something different, you have to tap into courage. Courage is the bridge from one level of consciousness to the next level of consciousness. And you can't see what you what you can't see anything above yourself until you step into courage, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, it totally makes right? sense. It's inside, if you want a higher level you, you have to get through the discomfort in order to get there. You it, have it's to. almost a sacrifice that you have to pay. If you sort of have to earn your way into a higher level you, and it means facing your fear and walking yeah. through discomfort. Yeah, at one point I heard God speak to me. I know, because it was nothing that I'd ever heard. And God said, you've got to feel the pain to make the change. You've got to feel the pain to make the change. If you can't, or if you're not willing to be uncomfortable, if you're not willing to feel that, uh, that pain, yeah, uh, or that struggle or that sacrifice or whatever, you're not going to take it to the next level. Is that true or not? Yeah, I think so, right? And it's like Kyle Bryant said, sort of, you find out this disruptive experience that you think, oh, my gosh, I want to reject this, and this is not what I want for my life, right? And then you... Then you allow yourself to experience it, and once you're in the experience of it, you're like, this actually has benefits for me. This actually has made a better me as a result of this experience. That's good. Hey, Bill, how do people get your book? Hey, they can get it at Amazon. They can get it at Barnes & Noble. They can get it online. They can go to a store, but uh, either one, Courage Goes to Work. They can also go to CourageGoesToWork.com or CourageBuilding.com. Okay, listen. I want to reclaim uh, our humanity in an age of arrogance. So that's what we're going to be talking about with you, your new book, The Leadership Killer, and in my next segment, we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. You know you have it, the potential for a more rewarding life, a life that matters. But how do you get there? The answer is in Ken D. Foster's best-selling book, The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. With this powerful 365-day guide, your future is in your hands. Imagine having a detailed roadmap to reprogram your brain daily with astute wisdom, courageous strategies, and time-tested wealth principles. You will redefine what is possible for you, unlock your potential, and bring out your best to take your relationships, finances, and life to a new level. Get your life-transforming copy of Ken D. Foster's The Courage to Change Everything by going to CourageToChange.us. 
quite frankly, there is no other book like this. Imagine what your life would be like if you had at your fingertips the success principles to create the life you've always wanted. Are you ready to live your dream? Go to CourageToChange.us. That's CourageToChange.us. Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, I'm back. We're talking the courage to shift into high gear. And trust me, if you if you are listening to this show, I can almost guarantee you're getting seeds planted in your head to shift you into high gear. In fact, after after you listen to this uh, show, you may want to get on Facebook or Twitter and let your friends and family know about this so they can take their life and put it into high gear also. Uh, I want to say this, too. I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Voice of Courage show. And if you are are new to the show, I want you to think about this. This show is all about getting you ready to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. That's our mission. That's what I'm here to do. And if that's somebody, if that's something you want to do, then keep tuning in and visit us at voicesofcourage.us to listen to all my amazing replays that we've done over the last year on this particular show. All right, I'm in studio with Bill Treasure. And Bill is an author, a speaker, and a trainer. Most importantly, he's a courageous pioneer. Uh, it, we, during the break, you said uh, that courage is as essential to life as air. And I was like, well, okay, that lands. Why is that? <laughs> you know, the, as I've, my contemplation, my research, my work in courage for the last 25 years is that I've recognized over time that it is as essential to life as breathing. In fact, to, to enjoy the human experience, you have to encounter fear, sometimes small scale, sometimes big scale. Uh, but it is this encountering of fear and working through things that are difficult, hard, challenging, and scary that it's almost always the scarier it is to confront, the better the reward is on the backside. You can't get through the human experience. You would live a totally flatlined life if you didn't experience your courage. So it, it, there's a reason that we have it, uh, this idea of courage. In, our, in fact, there's probably a biological location for courage in your brain in, in the amygdala uh, called the subgunal anterior cingulate cortex. And it, uh, it's associated with helping sublimate fear, which is in your amygdala. Uh, so there's a biological reason that you have fear. Uh, you have, well, there's a biological for fear. It gives you self-preservation. But there's a biological reason you have courage, and that is to overcome and sublimate your fear. Makes so much sense. You know, in our world today, um, gosh, humility is uh, kind of a lost trait, at least on media. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of people spouting out their, um, their views, uh, left, right, uh, backwards and forwards, whatever you want to say here. But uh, there's not a lot of humility there. there. There seems to be a lot of arrogance of it's my way or the highway. This is what's right uh, for the country. This is what's right for you. Um, you wrote a book called The Leadership Killer, Reclaiming Humility in the Age of Arrogance. Um, am I right about that, or is that what, what do you think about what's going on out there? You know, I, I wrote the book with uh, a guy who trained out here for many years and was located out here for many years, Captain John Havlick, a Navy SEAL, hmm. and he was out at Coronado. Mm -hmm. And John and I have been friends for about 35 years. We were teammates at West Virginia University on the swimming and diving team. And as we rekindled our relationship, we started uh, sharing articles and, and thoughts on courage. And we came a lot of fails. There were a lot of stories in the paper about leadership fails. And you've seen them, right? I mean, pick, pick up the, the newspaper on most days. And when you would trace back the leadership fail, it usually was somebody who actually had a good reputation and then did something to decimate their entire reputation and put their whole career at risk. And I, we, I, I just saw that on The Bachelor uh, the other night. You know, where a fella, you know, he 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 got engaged, and uh, they found out later he wasn't telling the truth. So the whole relationship was based on a lie, right. based on you know no integrity. Right. So it happens all the time. It happens in our all the time. And we, we trace it back to this idea of a word that he would use a lot when I would talk with him as we were writing the book he would come back to this word hubris. And, and then, then I started researching the word hubris, dangerous overconfidence. Uh, it's actually an old Greek word. Uh, part of the word can sometimes mean taking pleasure in somebody else's pain. There's even a sexual connotation to the word hubris. And all this was happening while the, you know, the 
Harvey Weinstein thing broke open and all these other events going on. And we thought, you know, there needs to be a book about the danger of hubris to leadership. Leadership matters. Leadership, we want great leaders. I've written other books on leadership about how to be a great leader. This is a book about how to stay a leader when you're in a leadership position so that you don't let hubris take over because it's seductive. People are telling you how special you are, and once you start to believe it and treat yourself like you're special, now you're making your leadership about you and not about others, and then it becomes a danger to others. It makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, hubris, the opposite of that has to be truth. It has to be a place of self-reflection, a, a place of understanding your strengths, your weaknesses. But it all the foundation is truth, courage, and love. That's what I got. Yeah, there's a lot um, to, for, to for that. Leaders, for leaders. For I leadership. Mean, if, you're not, if you're not a, a person of, of uh, truthful, being truthful to yourself, how do you lead other people? Yeah, it ta- and it takes integrity, right? The, and it takes I mean, you humility. might lead them, but you might lead them down a path of no return. Or, or right off a cliff. Or right off a cliff, A lot of people cliff, following yeah. a lemming, right? Yeah. Um, the humility matters to leadership. We, th- we want leaders that are confident and powerful. Absolutely. We, the leadership comes with power. But we want to make sure it's anchored to humility. And humility, the first part of that word, just like humus, uh, hum, is uh, grounded. We want somebody who's terrestrial, touched to here to earth, grounded to earth with their humility so that, sure, they can fly off with some power and we'll let them inflate, but we want to make sure they're grounded, know where their roots are. Well, you know, I looked up the word humility in the dictionary, and uh, one of the definitions is to see reality clearly. Mm. And I thought, man, that's that's it. That's that, great. Is, isn't that it, great? It goes back you to your it? point about truthful, right. right? I mean, when you're seeing reality clearly, you can be. You don't have to put on any airs. You you become an observer. Mm. When you know, I I know me personally. I, I get out of judgment. I you know, I I step back and I can now see things from an observer, all sides. Because I'm not in judgment. I'm not going. This is right. This is wrong. This should be this way. This should be that way. I'm just at a place where. Well, what's working here? What's not? Mm-hmm. How can how can I be a service here, right? A it's healthy that place. detachment. Yeah, I call it the day moon. It's mm-hmm. like what you know. You go outside during the day, and there's a full moon. It's actually in the morning. You can see the full moon. And you're like, what does that moon do? That you belong at night, but it's actually observing during the daytime, right? When you see the day moon, it's uh, it's the observer posture to be able to stand apart from, look at things clinically, objectively, neutrally, truthfully without having to be so attached to it that you take a side. I love it. Listen, this show has been amazing. I am so happy to have you in studio. Oh, man, it was great to be with you, Ken. And good luck with your great book coming out. And good luck with your books. Uh, uh, Again, let me me, uh, talk about your book real quick, The Courage to Go to Work, How to Build Backbones, Boost Performance, and Get Results. You can get that on Amazon or any bookstore uh, around the nation. Also, your new book uh, out, The Leadership Killer, Reclaiming Humility in an Age of Arrogance, Build Treasure has uh, some words of wisdom here that uh, I believe you will benefit from. So I hope you'll go to the store and check out his books. Bill, um, final thoughts. Final thoughts to, you know, to all your listeners out there. I know a lot of folks are patched in through Facebook. I can see it right here. Uh, you know, personal fidelity. Remember those words, personal fidelity. Be faithful to yourself. Be true to yourself. And doing that, remember these other two words, be courageous. Apply your courage every day. That's it. I love it. And listen, we're giving this advice not because we're so great or we don't mess up or we don't have a lot of challenges in our life. We all do. But listen, if you're willing to look at your stuff, if you're willing to step into a greater sense of yourself, if you're willing to find your courage and do what's right, life gets better and better and better. Till next week, have a blessed day. Bless. Thanks for joining us for Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And we're always interested in what you have to say. So follow Ken on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or email your questions and comments to viewer at voicesofcourage.us. Also, you can find all of Ken's previous shows by visiting voicesofcourage.us. Be sure to join us next time as Ken brings more stories of courage that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. Until next time, live courageously and see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. This has been Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster.